One more time, uh, good evening everybody. Thank you for joining this series of lectures. Um, as you know, for last few weeks, uh, we had a um, set of lectures uh, related to our Serbian saints, particularly of recent times, uh, including last three or four centuries, covering many of our great saints, including Saint Basil of Ostrog, Saint Peter of Cetinje, Saint Nicholas Velimirovic of Žiča and Ohrid, and uh, then Martyrs for Faith, which included several saints from 19th and 20th century. Then we also talked about uh, Saint Justin of Celje, a disciple of Saint Nicholas and the great Serbian theological writer and philosopher, uh, comparable to the Holy Fathers from the early Christian time and the early centuries. And uh, now we turned to the Northern America, in fact, to the New World and to our very well-known saints, canonized recently, but recognized as saints for many decades before that. Those are Saint Sebastian of Jackson and San Francisco and Saint Mardarie of Libertville and North America. These two saints are particularly important and uh, established as such uh, by their missionary work, by their enlightening, Christian enlightening, by gospel and by their preaching in the state which, in, in, in a country which uh, has already been Christian at their time, but uh, as you know, mostly Protestant and partly Roman Catholic country many states there of course so as early as of 19th century beginning of 19th century with the expansion of the states in the united states of america there started an orthodox mission first led by russian monks and russian priests and firstly started from the territories of northwestern uh, part of North America, meaning Alaska nowadays, and then Canada, and then spread to nowadays United States. And among them, there were St. Sebastian and St. Mardarie. Here I present also a troparion, which comprised both of them and is sang for both of them for the feast day of both of them and the feast days are for saint sebastian it's november 17th in julian calendar or 13th of november in a, a gregorian calendar new calendar while for saint Mardaria it's uh, december uh december 12th in the new calendar which means like uh November 29th in Julian calendar. We're very close to each other. It's the days of their repose in Lord, when they passed away. And in their troparion, they are celebrated particularly as fathers, establishers of church and faith, which particularly uh, emphasis the, their importance in a missionary work. And that's why they are presented in the frescoes and icons. Unlike the other holy fathers, bishops and priests, uh, who mostly are represented by uh, keeping uh, gospel, New Testament, in their right hand here, they are present, represented as uh, keeping the church, the monasteries, uh, or uh, which they are established, uh, Saint Sebastian has now established uh, our first Serbian Orthodox parish in Jackson, and Saint Mardarius established the monastery in Libertville. And that's why these two saints could be compared 
with Saint Cyril and Methodius, which are Christian enlightener of the Slavonic people, among them also Serbs and Serbian ancestors. And it is similar here is, as you can see, uh, one of the Holy Brothers, Saint Methodius, um, was consecrated bishop at one point in his life, later in his life, while the other brother, Saint Cyril, was not bishop, but served as a monk, in fact, not even as a priest, but he did particularly great part of the work. At the beginning, he translated it, uh, most of the books for the service in church from Greek into the Slavonic, old Slavonic language, and established the letters, Slavonic letters and Slavonic alphabet, which he used for writing the books in Slavonic, this church service books. It's something similar in the case of Saint Sebastian Mardali, which you can see here. And Saint Sebastian came first as a forerunner for what later was prepared for the full missionary work of Saint Mardari as a bishop. So the same like Saint Sebastian was not a bishop, he was a priest in Archimandrit. It's uh, the highest priest level, while Saint Mardari was a bishop as it was Saint Methodi. So that's why I made this uh, comparison. <coughs> and the same as in the case of uh, Holy Brothers, at, the, at their time in ninth century, when they were sent by the Byzantine Emperor, Eastern Roman Emperor, to the territories and states of Slavonic tribes and people, uh, at the time there already has been a uh, spread of Christianity uh, all along, the, uh, all over the Europe at that time. And same in the uh, case of Saint Sebastian Mardari, which were sent to United States of America, Northern American general, where there already has been Christianity in the mean of Roman Catholicism and Protestant confessions. But they were sent there to give a preach of the, the fullness of our faith, which is given in our Orthodox Christian belief and our Orthodox Christian church. So in kind of a correction of the faith of the people there uh, in the Protestant and Roman Catholic Church, which had some kind of differences uh, accumulated over the centuries since the great schism in 11th century. So here let's turn first to Saint Sebastian. Uh, and at this point I would apologize you for uh, there are not too many slides for Saint Mardari. Was, I was focused to try to do it the best possible then it's a kind of bit disbalance for slides for Saint Mardari and so Saint Sebastian. So you will see more slides here for Saint Sebastian, but anyway, here is everything to be covered for both of them. Saint Sebastian uh, here, as we can see, is again uh, celebrated for his missionary work. And uh, in Kondekians, it's also one of uh, Christian hymns incorporated in the church services of Matins. And uh, in Kondekians in general, uh, it's used to be uh, tell, uh, told all, uh, everything most important for one saint about his life and his deeds. And it's kind of a retelling, uh, in short, the whole of his life. So it's a case here we can see kind of uh, uh, comprising of all his deeds and work, which means it's uh, he worked uh, in preaching and uh, giving the, the, the love of Christianity and the truth of our Lord Jesus Christ to all those people who were not Christians or who were Protestants and Roman Catholics and giving the light of Christian Orthodox faith to them 
and doing all these deeds of mercy and uh, taking care of those who are poor or in need or any, anything like that. And it's uh, the manner which, in which uh, most of saint missionaries are uh, described in Kondakians or their services. That's the same in here in case of Saint Sebastian. So Saint Sebastian was born as Jovan or John Dabovic uh, in 1863 in San Francisco. And his parents originally, uh, the original is from uh, Herzeg Novi, which at the time belonged to Austria-Hungary Empire, and it's nowadays Montenegro. And so far we know now, he's one of the earliest or the first prominent Serbian born in San Francisco, in, San, in Bay Area at all. Uh, it doesn't mean that no one of Serb people were, was born here, but uh, it's just that uh, those who went on to become prominent, especially in church, as Saint Sebastian, who is the first noun, and among the first Serbian people born uh, in the West Coast at all. So he was uh, the, the oldest uh, child in their parents, uh, in his parents. Uh, besides him, there was also. Uh, three sisters of him, one of who was uh, um, later married to a prominent Russian Orthodox priest who went on to become a bishop in San Francisco. And uh, St. Sebastian's sister's name was Ella. And, uh, well, uh, he was educated, uh, he graduated the primary school and high school in uh, San Francisco and later he was blessed by Bishop, uh, Russian Orthodox Bishop of San Francisco at the time it was Bishop Vladimir who sent him for the edu theological education in Russia so he spent four years in St. Petersburg and in Kiev during that time he was tonsured monk in 1887 and uh, ordained a deacon the same year at his uh, monastic tonsure he received the name of saint sebastian the martyr who was also one of the first preachers uh, besides his martyrdom he also was uh, walking around uh, the, the, the territory of nowadays italy in the Rome, Roman Empire, and was preaching as being soldier uh, in uh, the guard of uh, Emperor Diocletian, who was very famous or unfamous by the persecution of Christians, which he undertook uh, starting uh, in the starting year of his being emperor in uh, 284. So very soon afterwards, St. Sebastian was captured and put on trial and then subsequently murdered by arrows, as it is represented on this uh, icon in Western, Latin Western style. <clears throat> and uh, later, uh, Saint Sebastian, when he returned back to the United States, he was uh, ordered to undertake uh, missionary work in various and different uh, parishes, even before his being sent to Russia for the theological education. He was, for a brief time, he was a reader and a chanter and also teacher in the parish of St. Michael's Cathedral in uh, this town, or at that time it was just a village, Sitka in Alaska. That was 
in the first or the earliest Orthodox Eastern Orthodox parish established in the Northern America or in the New World at all, because all missionary work of Orthodox Church started first in North America, then in South America. So when we say New World, it always means that it started first in North. So in it was in Alaska in the beginning of 19th century, uh, exactly in 1816, when the first uh, priest came from Russia to start uh, a missionary work. And missionary work includes a preaching of gospel and uh, besides that also baptizing the people who were not baptized in Orthodox Church and uh, serving the Divine Liturgy and Eucharist. So the three cornerstones of the missionary work which uh, means that it needs uh, a parish priest to be there. It's not just enough to have a, let's say a monk or a layman but the priest must be there to complete, to fulfill the accomplishment of the missionary work. And uh, later St. Sebastian returned back to Sitka after the, his time of education and later being a parish priest for some time, he returned back there during his missionary work for three years again in the beginning of 20th century. And this is also, here is represented St. Michael's Cathedral in Sitka, in the city of Sitka. And then it were almost all the years in the United States, St. Sebastian, staying in the United States, were, uh, let's say, felt by traveling from one parish to another and uh, doing his missionary work. It started first, as I say, like it was first that he was, after he was ordained a deacon and graduated in Russia, he came back to San Francisco and served as a deacon in the old Russian cathedral, which was at the address at 1713 Powell Street. For four years, at the time there was a big, a huge uh, fire in San Francisco in 1889 so the first built cathedral there was destroyed by fire and then it was rebuilt and renovated <coughs> the same address as we can see here so saint sebastian stayed there until 1892 when he was ordained priest by bishop vladimir the same one who sent him for theological education. And then subsequently he was sent for a year and a half, a little bit less than that, to Minneapolis, Minnesota, to help uh, establish a mission there, which already was uh, established. And uh, But the case was that uh, a priest who was there uh, became an Orthodox from the Uniates or for uh, from uh, Greek uh, Catholic Church. It was a priest originally a Slovakian man who came to United States as a, a Greek uh, Catholic priest, which means uh, that uh, it's a part of uh, originally Orthodox people who received and accepted the union with the Roman Catholic Church earlier in the history. So it was a case in some territories under the Polish and the Czech and Slovakian rulership in the 16th, 17th, 18th century. So it was a case in exactly with Slovakian people, in some territories, and they were uniates or like in union with the Roman Catholic Church for two or three centuries by then. And at that time, when the priest, it was uh, Alexei, Alexei Toth, his last name was Toth, uh, and he was later on canonized by his missionary work. He decided in uh, exactly in 1892 to convert back from union with Roman Catholicism into the uh, originally Orthodox Christian faith and Orthodox Christian Church. So he was accepted as a priest 
with no reordination, just he was re received. And it's the case usually uh, among Roman Catholic priests and Orthodox priests when there is a conversion from Roman Catholics to Orthodox, they become uh, recognized in their uh, rank, in their uh, ordination as they were. So it was a case with this priest and uh, he and his flock, his uh, parishioners, about 300 of them, received back, were received back to Orthodox Christianity, the Orthodox Christian Church, and they now belonged to uh, Russian Orthodox Missionary Church in uh, North America. That's why St. Sebastian was sent there to help this uh, early mission for the reason of uh, they wanted there to be one uh, Orthodox priest by native, like who was born as a, and raised as an Orthodox Christian who served as Orthodox Christian priest. So he stayed there shortly, just for a year and a half, a little bit less than that. And once that uh, parish stood fast and uh, could be an independent, with an independent priest, then he returned back uh, upon the invitation of Russian bishop in San Francisco. And uh, St. Sebastian was sent to establish a first Serbian missionary parish, then which later on became a first Serbian parish church in the United States and in the North America and in the New World at all. It was in Jackson, California our famous church there and famous uh, graveyard. So he was uh, anointed uh, as a head of that parish for the next decade and a half, about 15 years. But most of the time he was sent back and forth, back and forth uh, to the other uh, missionary works in states uh, where he established a new parish and started like with mission there. Among that it, it was uh, in uh, Portland, Oregon, in uh, Seattle, Washington state and in uh, Arizona, back again in the uh, East Coast and in Chicago area. So Uh, as as I said, like he stayed uh, some time back in the Sitka in Alaska, where he preached uh, among the Aleutian population, which is like a native uh, population of Alaska. And then, uh, in early 20th century, he was sent back uh, to help uh, the rising Serbian parish and population. So he stayed for few years in Chicago and Holy Resurrection Church in the old church there, the oldest Serbian church in that eastern half of the United States of America. At that time, uh, starting on uh, 1905, a uh, Russian bishop was Saint Tikhon, Saint Tikhon Belavin, who later went on to become uh, first patriarch of renewed patriarch, uh, uh, patriarchy of uh, Moscow and uh, whole Russia, and who also went on to become a martyr of uh, Russian Orthodox Church, who was persecuted uh, and murdered by communists, by Bolsheviks in 1925. So Saint Tikhon was a friend of uh, Saint uh, Sebastian and uh, as a bishop at the time, archbishop in fact. So he promoted uh, establishing uh, Serbian parishes and he also recommended St. Sebastian for uh, ordination and consecration into bishop. But uh, eventually it didn't happen for several different reasons. Among that, uh, there was some kind of uh, opposition among uh, the Russian church, and Russian clergymen at the time, because what uh, St. Tikhon proposed was uh, in fact uh, 
kind of uh, autonomous church, uh, Serbian church, inside the Russian uh, Orthodox Diocese of North America, which would give some kind of uh, freedom and independence. It's kind of halfway toward the full independence of Serbian diocese there in the United States. So for some reason at the time, there was some kind of opposition. Uh, what was claimed at the time is that uh, Serbian uh, church still do not have enough priests and uh, it would not be able to be led as independently and uh, as sustainable uh, organization and so on. And the, the other side of the story, uh, it was, let's say, more or less uh, a problem with the parishioners there, the Serbian community, who at times accused, uh, like unlawfully accused uh, or uh, unjustly uh, accused Saint Sebastian for being a kind of proponent of Russian church and more devoted to Russian Orthodoxy than to the Serbian Orthodoxy, some kind of uh, nationalism or some kind of just a uh, wrong attitude that we can say. But just we may notice that it's kind of, uh, that let's say time was not still like fulfilled and that it's not matured yet. All the, the, the affairs for, of Serbian church at that time in the United States were not yet came to the point of being ready to start this, their independent life, which would happen later with Bishop Mardari. But uh, since Sebastian gave a lot of efforts uh, to uh, bring a peace among those parties of Serbian people there and just reconcile them and try to unify them in their parish and help them overcome many problems of the everyday life, Serbian community, and especially, particularly, spiritual and church life there. So, Partly for the reason of uh, the ongoing uh, and starting uh, the wars in Serbia at the time, uh, for also for the reason of his uh, devotion and uh, uh, desire to see the homeland of his parents, the Saint Sebastian decided to go to Serbia in 1912 and the onset of the first Bal Balkanian war which would eventually be his last travel to Serbia, in fact. So he stayed there for life, until the end of his life. Uh, also, although he did not plan at that moment to stay for so long, but uh, uh, there are some historians which also uh, say that uh, part of the reason was that Saint Sebastian was also uh, feeling a bit uh, disappointed that there was still uh, some kind of uh, overwhelming uh, particularism and uh, separatism in, in the community of Serbian population, Serbian church in the United States, and also some opposition from Russians at the time. And he planned to get back after the end of the uh, First World War, but at that time, he was a bit in advanced age, and so he was uh, uh, appointed for the other duties in the Serbian Orthodox Church in the Old Lands. So he stayed there. In fact, he was honored and awarded both by church, by Serbian Orthodox Church, by uh, Kingdom of Serbia, then later Kingdom of Yugoslavia and by Kingdom of Montenegro as well. Here we see two of his uh, honors or awards. One is the Medal of Saint Sava, uh, the highest ranking or, uh, award now given by Serbian Orthodox Church, but at the time before the Second World War, during the Kingdom of Serbia and Kingdom of Yugoslavia, it was awarded by King himself. And uh, the other, to the right, it's a uh, middle of Saint of um, Prince Danilo of Montenegro, which is the highest ranking honor and award in the Kingdom of Montenegro, 
in Principality of Montenegro and later on, on starting in 1910, it was the Kingdom of Montenegro. So he was apprised both by his father's lands there in a in motherland, in, in fact, in a, in a um, territories of Montenegro, but both also in Serbia where he stayed for most of his life. And it uh, went on that he stayed in the monastery of Jicha for the last two decades as uh, Archimandri there and uh, had uh, a bot of the monastery. And uh, he reposed in Lord peacefully there in Jicha monastery on November 30th in 1940. And later in, in 2007, there was an initiative for the returning of his relics back, or his remains at that time, not yet canonized, being not yet canonized. I mean, so uh, it was, uh, uh, so the community, Serbian Orthodox Church in the Diocese of Western America, uh, started this initiative to return his remains back to the church and parish which he established first. It was the first Serbian parish in the New World, in the Jackson. And uh, his remains were transferred in 2007 and uh, were entombed in the graveyard of uh, uh, Jackson Cemetery then later moved inside the church, put in the foundations of church. And later in 2015, there was a canonization of both St. Sebastian and St. Mardari by the Holy Council of Serbian Orthodox Church. And then um, it was a great celebration during the Diocese days, both in the uh, Diocese of uh, Midwest and uh, Western American Diocese. Uh, the time shortly prior to the celebration, his uh, remains were uh, taken out from the tomb and they were found uh, incorrupted and they were put into the uh, small, uh, how to say this, I'm not sure what's the correct term for this, uh, the place where we keep relics after the veneration and then it's now there in the church in uh, Jackson. And also something briefly about Bishop Mardarius since I don't have many slides here is just uh, to say that he was born some 25 years after Saint Sebastian like exactly in 1889 in Montenegro, among the very famous and prominent tribe of Uskokovic family. And since he was very gifted as, uh, from his uh, childhood and very uh, inclined to the education, he was sent first to primary and then high school and then sent to theological school in uh, St. Petersburg and Kiev, same as St. Sebastian, on the blessing by uh, Bishop, uh, by Metropolitan of Montenegro, and later also by the Serbian Orthodox Church, where he transferred later, uh, shortly before the First World War. And then at that time, he stayed for uh, his education, eventually graduating in. Uh, 1912. Then he returned back for short to Serbia and when, then was sent back to Russia during the First World War as a part of the missionary work, the same as Saint Bishop Nikolai was sent to UK and the uh, United States also to support our efforts during the war to get the support by the allies of uh, United States of uh, United Kingdom and France and so on. The same way uh, Saint Mardari at the time as ordained as a priest was sent 
to Russia where he previously was educated to help by giving uh, sermons in Russian Orthodox churches and also as a head of the Serbian church in uh, Moscow. It was called Podvorje, Serbsko Podvorje. There he stayed during the years of First World War and also on several occasions he was invited to give a lecture or talk in uh, the Russian Duma, uh, where he also gave very uh, well-known and prominent talks and uh, warned about uh, the ongoing uh, uh, communism and the potential revolutionary movements which started at that time in Russia. And so he was also very well received uh, in uh, the court of Russia and the emperor and uh, many officials there. He was invited to several occasions also to present the Serbian questions and Serbian problems uh, during the war and the, the what's the uh, temporary uh, activities of Serbian state and military affairs and so on. So he was a kind of representative of both Serbian church and Serbian state in Russia at the time, but uh, by the onset of the great revolutionary movements early in 1917, he was moved back to Serbia. First, uh, he stayed for some time in uh, Greece where Serbian soldiers were situated and uh, they established the front of Thessaloniki, as you know, which was the last uh, uh, offensive of Serbian uh, military forces and then uh, the liberation of Serbian territory and the unification into the Kingdom of Yugoslavia, as you know, in 1980. At the time, Saint Mardari was sent to the United States to uh, consolidate the existing parish there and uh, to establish a new one of them and also to start making a kind of uh, legal affairs to prepare uh, the Serbian parish for uh, getting an independent diocese there and since at the time uh, there was uh, there were many problems in a uh, functioning of Russian Orthodox Church due to the communism and Bolsheviks which banned uh, and uh, started the persecution of the church there and also at the time there were refugees from Russia and uh, uh, the establishing of uh, Russian Orthodox Church outside of uh, Russia as you know it's a rock core. and it was the years of uh, the partial chaos in, in Russian church organization so at the time serbian parishes wanted to get their independence in uh, their uh, governing and having their own bishop so for that reason in fact uh, saint mardaria was sent there to us to stay to prepare himself for the coming duties the bigger and the more important duties of being a bishop later it was a plan of uh, patriarch demetrius who previously was a metropolitan of Serbia and head of the church in Serbia and later on became a patriarch of all Serbs and Serbian Orthodox Church in Yugoslavia. But he knew from previous time, from even from the time of uh, St. Mardarius' education in Russia, all his talents and capabilities in organization work. So that's why he sent him there to establish this parish uh, and prepare also, um, the church constitution and make all these institutional affairs and work, which was preparing to get an independent diocese, which was established in early 20s, in 1920s. And he was an uh, administrator, uh, as a mandator of the diocese, uh, still being a priest and monk. And later on in 1926 he was uh, elected bishop and consecrated bishop in a cathedral church in Belgrade, St. Archangel Michael uh, Cathedral. 
in uh, Belgrade, uh, and then he traveled by ship. He, he was sailing to United States same year. He was enthroned in the uh, Holy Resurrection Church in Chicago, where was his residence. And uh, even before becoming a bishop and later as a bishop, he was doing uh, construction work, even himself, by his own hands, bringing many bricks there and uh, helping all those workers in uh, building up the new cathedral there and uh, building up also the uh, monastery in Libertville. Since our monastery in Libertville, it's called New Gracchanica all over these years. So he uh, ceaselessly was doing his uh, missionary work, which cost him his health. He was by his constitution, his physical constitution, his bit uh, weaker constitution. And uh, he had some health problems even before. As, as you know, at the time there were no treatment, no medication for uh, tuberculosis and he uh, contracted tuberculosis in the early uh, 1920s. So he struggled for years with that disease, but uh, never stopped his missionary work, uh, visiting all his parishes, uh, uh, fortifying them and uh, making the unification among the Serbian communities there. You know, at the time it was also some kind of uh, confrontation between those who came earlier before First World War and the like newcomers after this First World War, between the wars. So same as today, it's always kind of, uh, um, let's say, tendency to some, some kind of uh, separatism and some kind of confrontations, but uh, Saint Mardari was really a hero of uh, reconciling people, Serbian people, and community there. So eventually, um, his disease progressed and he reposed in Lord in 1935. For all his life, he never um, showed any kind of, uh, let's say, um, argument or being like uh, and dissatisfied with the condition of his life and everything that happens to him. He was also accused many times by his parishioners for doing something or for not doing something. It's always misunderstanding of his work and that's something like that. Same as what uh, followed saint john of shanghai in san francisco who was also put on trial at some point in his life it was same with saint mardari he was not well accepted by everybody during his lifetime which doesn't mean that he was doing wrong but it means that uh, sometimes he he faced he met some stubborn people some people who do not have enough uh, understanding for his work and also he faced many uh, uh, financial difficulties in these parishes, which also were like sometimes misgoverned in financial sense and so on. And you know, eventually all these, all these deeds and work uh, were paid at all by his health. But uh, he did not uh, give it up. He would never give it up by just uh, his, uh, worsening health condition. So we Hey, Miroslav, uh, please uh, unmute yourself. Okay, sorry. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for warning me. So, uh, as a conclusion for this lecture, I would just uh, hit some points about St. Mardari and St. Sebastian in general. As we can see, here we have two missionary workers, missionaries. Uh, very comparable and the same in level as uh, 
missionaries such as Saint Cyril and Methodius, and uh, whose work was in a modern time, almost uh, in the nowadays, who faced many problems of uh, Serbian Orthodox community, uh, the New World, and the problems with the immigrants, and uh, many crises at the time, and uh, confrontations among the uh, older and the newcomers, and so on. And everything that was uh, very hard, hard work at the time. But uh, what we can see is that uh, that work is also uh, one of the most important in the life of church, just to fortify the church and keep it from all the winds from right or left, from east or west or whatever, in all the sense uh, to preserve our faith and to uh, govern the faithful people, the flock, the parishioners, you know. And all that work fell on the shoulders of Saint Sebastian and Saint Mardarie, one as a priest, as a forerunner, as kind of Saint John uh, uh, the Baptist, who was a forerunner for our Lord Jesus Christ. There's something similar here as uh, Saint Sebastian who prepared uh, the terrain, the, the area, the, the, all the affairs for later coming of the first Serbian bishop, the Saint Mardaria. And both of them had many bitter points in their life due to the not enough understanding community and population, people there, There's some confrontation of them, a lot of troubles that they suffered in their lives, but they fully gave themselves to the well-being in a spiritual sense, well-being of our community and our people there in the United States. So that's kind of also monastic service when you give yourself fully for the people, for the life of the world, uh, but in a sense of like Christian Orthodox world, not like just uh, kind of um, sec secular world in, in wrong sense. But here you see that uh, their work was just giving themselves to the total, to the maximum for the well-being of church and all the people who constitute the church. So uh, I would stop at this point and I'll offer you to ask me whatever you have and want. Please let this be a uh, beginning of our discussion. As you know, this, these are most important of our Serbian clergymen in uh, North America. So it's a good opportunity for you to discuss and ask anything you want. Thank you. Thank you for your attention. So, did you know um, Dino's friend, yeah, one of Dino's friends, my husband's friend, um, he went to that celebration in 2015. So oh, nice, nice. I didn't know that exactly. That's his great grandfather, Nikolaus Kokovic, is Dino's friend. So, oh. he went there, I think it was in LA. Great. Yeah, yeah it was in LA at that time. Yes, yes, exactly. It was a celebration in the uh, yeah, that's really recent, there recent in uh, Alhambra in 2015. Yeah, that was an official proclamation uh, after the canonization. Like the canonization act is done by Holy uh, Council of Bishops, who originally um, gather in Belgrade, Serbia, usually in May. May that year, 2015, they gathered and uh, decided to canonize these two saints and then they were uh, celebrated first the uh, celebration in the Divine Liturgy and put in a diptychos, um, which means like put as in, in the list of saints whose names are no more uh, uh, prayed for, but we now started praying to them for us. At that point, uh, after the first celebration of 
then, then it was uh, a ceremony or just a kind of celebration, which then was transferred here to the United States, uh, where then their relics were transferred previously, and then they were also uh, uh, celebrated and putting out and uh, putting in the tombs uh, inside the church, not uh, as entombed in the foundations, as you know. So that's kind of how the ceremony of uh, canonization looks like. Well, thank you for this, uh, mentioning this, that Dan was there, I didn't know that. Well, Father Slobodan, you are here. Please uh, join us, and <laughs> it's also opportunity for you yes, to tell sir. something about <laughs> and, uh, your you experience. Have, you have put your head and uh, uh, half of it invisible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, your camera is a little bit um, off. Oh, a little bit. Uh, focused only on forehead. That's me. Oh, I'm not sure how. I just see myself. Oh, oh sorry, okay. sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, uh, Thank you for I was a little about that. late, but uh, you need to sometimes uh, to remind us and uh, uh, to make sure that we um, uh, um, join in time and not uh, to be late. Oh yes, I enjoy very that. much. Oh, yeah, that's, 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 that's true. With uh, what difficulty was built in uh, um, Saint Saul's Monastery in Libertyville, uh, right. and, uh, and uh, how difficult the um, relationship with people. Uh, he suffered so much, you mentioned that. Uh, and, uh, it's amazing, it's unbelievable. It's much easier in these days to build a church than uh, at this time because uh, people earned so little and uh, they were um, working and uh, their uh, pay per hour was uh, counting cents, not in dollars. So yes. uh, uh, it was not, uh, uh, that easy uh, to build a church and uh, uh, since Allah in Liberty is uh, a very pretty and lovely church and I always enjoy and uh, being uh, um, there serving um, several times uh, and uh, I, I think we will never give enough of credit to Bishop Mardaria for right. all his great work uh, now Saint Mardaria and uh, of Chicago and uh, and, uh, and definitely uh, he deserves all the respect from his people and, and uh, hopefully we will uh, this is uh, one lecture but we can always uh, Organize another one, maybe one uh, um, uh, lecture dedicated exclusively to uh, Saint Mardaria, and the other one uh, exclusively to uh, Saint Sebastian. Yes, um, yes, right. It would be there are a, a, a lot to say. And, uh, Absolutely, yes. This is just some of the most there. prominent, most important points from their lives. It's many, many things to say. So, yeah. I was thinking maybe to make it separately later or whatever. This is just kind of brief introductory or just to right. make sense for people in general, like what was... I want you to point. start preparation of history of my church and other churches in the Bay Area. And oh, it would be great. To, uh, don't mind that, that's something if... I love that. <laughs> if something is not uh, written somewhere, no. Oh yeah, right. It's yeah. like uh, it never happened. So that uh, let's try to do that uh, as well, because there are many names uh, that will remain forgotten if we don't uh, recognize them in a proper way. That's true. Yes, <laughs> it's a good idea. But I support it. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Thank you, Father. Thank you. <laughs> I enjoy the uh, the part that I attended. Oh, thank you, thank you. Anyway, <laughs> so anybody else, any question or comment or anything? Oh, Zlata, dobroveče. Dobroveče. That, that's fine. That's fine. No. Okay. 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 Okay.
trčao po sobi i samo me interesuje, jer sam iznenađena kad sam videla da je postojala crkva na Aljasci. Da li je bilo pravoslavaca, da li je bilo Srba uopšte na Aljasci? Evo, mogu vam reći, ne znam, zbog ostalih ljudi, ja ću možda preći opet na engleski, vama ne smijete. Nema problema, možda. Well, yeah, the point is that it was a Russian missionary church established in early 19th century. Uh, yeah, okay. 19th century, exactly, uh -huh. 18, 16, something like that. And uh, for a long time, it was uh, like just a Russian missionary among the Aleuts, the population, native population there in Alaska. Then it uh, included then some other people, some Protestants who also converted in the meantime. It was not uh, regarded as a Serbian parish or Serbian church, but uh, all those priests who were part of Russian church, then the only existing Orthodox Christian church at the North America territories, were sent there. Among them it was Saint Sebastian at some point later in the 19th century. And okay. that's why uh, the, at that point like, there were no Serbian people, like maybe in the late 1880s or like 1890s, something like that. But later on, I guess there were some Serbian miners maybe coming there and some other trade men, I don't know exactly. But never, it, it was never, at that time, it was never, never uh, exact Serbian Orthodox Church parish as an independent parish for, for that time. Mm -hmm. I knew one uh, a lady from my parish uh, just uh, um, uh, uh, shortly after my arrival to Saratoga uh, in the year 2000 and uh, 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 Mrs. Stepovic, uh, she was uh, uh, living uh, in uh, Alaska. Um, her son was, uh, I guess, uh, um, governor or something uh, many years ago. And uh, she died uh, over 100 years um, of age. Uh, and um, family Stepovic came from Alaska originally to settle here in Saratoga. So there are some people who lived there, but uh, it was amazing uh, how Russians did uh, uh, missionary work uh, in Alaska. And at one time, uh, major religion in Alaska was orthodoxy, which uh, we should be proud of. Uh, it was uh, beautiful. Even today, orthodoxy is well known in Alaska. Yeah, uh, one of the first um, establishers, their missionaries were saint, was Saint uh, German of Alaska yeah. and the first Orthodox saint whose uh, deeds and work were particularly uh, related to Alaska and to Northern America in the beginning. And uh, there, uh, later on, like in the 20th century, uh, the monastery of Saint German of Alaska was established there and so, so that's still very active missionary there. So related to your question. But thank you for your question, Zlata. Thank you, Miroslav. The presentation was really, really good. Thank you. Okay, so should we finish or any other comment or question? Okay, so I want to thank you for your attention, for your nice questions and for supporting this dialogue and discussion about our first Serbian Saints of Serbian Orthodox Church in the Northern America. So thank you all and have a good night. Thank you. Stay yeah. safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.